Prophet Isaiah proclaims, from ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. St. Paul proclaims, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. And Christ Jesus proclaims, beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake. Advent, the season of Advent. Waiting, not regular waiting, but active waiting. Watching preparing. And in these last days, there are so many distractions. There are so many anxieties. There are so many concerns. With this, perhaps it's become rather easy for even the faithful at times to forget why Christ was born a helpless baby in a feeding trough for his cradle. Christ arrives in deep humility, wearing our human insecurities so that we might appear with him in glory. That's what this season is about. Humility leading to ultimate glory. Both the first advent of his birth and the second advent of his glory our realities so that we may share in his salvation. Salvation meaning his healing us to wholeness, his victory over death, in which we have victory over death, and so, so much more. But to encounter Christ, whether it's at his first or his second advent, is also to undergo a kind of judgment. For the truth about ourselves becomes evident when we enter God's presence. How we respond to him represents the state of our souls now and at the moment of his return. There won't be any law court trauma at all at the end of the age. The judgment took place on the cross. And we either side with Christ, believe who he is, who he says he is, and live our lives accordingly, or we freely choose not to. So if there's no one there waiting with a lawyer. The judgment is brought on ourselves one way or the other. How we respond to him is true when we look at how we prepare to receive him in this holy season of Advent. Through the Old Testament times, there, of course, there were people that didn't listen to the prophets, didn't listen to the law. They didn't prepare. They weren't ready for when the Messiah did appear. This was obvious in the scripture from when Christ Jesus did appear. And remember, his incarnation wasn't a random event, but the fulfillment of God's plan to bring us into God's divine life, since we had turned away from life and brought death into creation. But the reality remains, my dear brothers and sisters, no one was ever forced to get ready for him. Neither are we today. What, who will you choose freely this day and in the days to come as God grants us? To faithfully and freely wait, watch and prepare though is difficult. I know this, I'm sure you do too, because we all face the temptations of the day. The temptation to focus on other matters, other things. 
But we must look if we want to draw closer to God. And by drawing closer to God, draw closer to one another. Otherwise, we might use the common concerns of life as excuses not to watch and pray. We might use the common concerns of life as excuses not to prepare, not to actively wait in order to appear with the Lord in glory. But now is the appointed time. The Holy Spirit says today, the evil one says tomorrow. Do we let this world hamper and pamper us into not participating in the blessing and healing that Christ Jesus brings to all those created in his image and his likeness? Might it be true that instead of making everything from our daily duties and relationships to our health or lack thereof, opportunities to find greater healing for our souls? That would be well if that was the truth, but so often we make them false gods in a way that actually brings judgment upon ourselves. I'd be really good if only. If only I had more money. If only this pain would go away. If only my luck hadn't run out 40 years ago. Some people even get to the point of worshiping pain, that they don't want to give up the pain because they would rather have and serve the demon they know than the Lord God they don't know that well. This makes clear the weak state of our spiritual lives, but I'm speaking of myself first and foremost here. It's very easy to fall prey to temptations because there's much in us that really doesn't want to know the truth about our souls. We don't want our innermost self revealed as we encounter the living God in Christ. However, the reality remains that there are no cares in this life that in any way hide the state of our souls before God. And the more we make false gods and worship other people and other situations, whether we worship our daily responsibilities and whatever life circumstances that we may happen to face, the more we turn to whatever or whomever, turn away from the salvation that Christ was born to bring, the more we have brought judgment on ourselves. The more we take up with the likes of pride and anger or lust or envy or greed, sloth and other temptations, the more we will actually believe that satisfying our desires is more important actually than loving and serving God and neighbor. And we don't have to appear spectacularly sinful before others in order for this to happen. Because there's much in our culture that encourages us to worship our duties, to worship our problems, our pastimes, and our pleasures. Advent is a time to address those. Hit them head on. Do not be afraid. In Advent and every day, the church must remember and respond to the reality that the main purpose of our earthly existence is to prepare for eternity at our death or at the return of Christ. And Christ's precious gift of time must be developed. Our time must be utilized in order to inherit eternal life and rule with him in his eternal glory. And Christ calls his followers to value time and to live in that constant readiness to give an account of our life. As Jesus says, 
Watch therefore, for you do not know at what hour your Lord is coming. Although most people fear death, you know how much people will fear death? If you at any time, go down to any of your local funeral parlors. You know what you'll find in the back room? You'll find stacks, and I'm not exaggerating, stacks of created remains that people just didn't want to have anything to do with any of that. I'll just remember the person the way they were, because that never happened. Matter of fact, our family has helped one person to uh, get their created remains of their grandfather and give them a burial tablet, all right? Death. The funeral that is no funeral. Leave it in the hospital. Let it be sanitized there. I don't want to face it. Thankfully, hospice is helping to bring that back into our faces that we don't need to fear death unless, unless. The church has always asked people to be mindful of death. Death is the enemy. You need to be mindful of the enemy or you'll be caught unaware. So to be mindful of death and not to focus only on death, but to be mindful of death helps us to make real good decisions right here and right now. It brings us to a place of a more alert and watchful way of life. The majority of the early church, they eagerly and they faithfully awaited the return of Christ in glory. They looked forward with joy to the second coming. Nowadays, we hear things like, ah, oh, they're slower than the second coming of Christ. Or, I don't know, will I be ready? I don't know. I don't want him to come again in glory. There's a change here. Their expectation was supported. How? By the reality of persecution and martyrdom surrounding them, they were mindful of death. And the intensity of this reminded the church of the Savior's prediction about the last days. They thought they were in the last days. And here we are, centuries later, you're getting closer to the last days, or Christ is a liar. No one back then could even guarantee a single day of safe existence. The faithful early church with such burning faith and watchful diligence towards a righteous life embraced that watchfulness. For the faithful and true church to be able to meet with Christ in the return of glory knowing that this wasn't a sentence, a scene of judgment in a law court leading to punishment, but as a joyous meeting with their beloved Savior. Is that how you, is that how I look at the second coming? As damnation and judgment and the gavel falls down and the punishment begins, or is everyone free to choose their own judgment or not? Jesus says, be prepared for the hour which you don't expect. The Son of Man will arrive. And the church is called, especially in the season of Advent, to be attentive to our spiritual state. The church freely chooses to put forth the effort to exercise the soul, to exorcise any demons that are in there. Be careful doing that yourself. You might need help. To prepare, to actively wait in watchfulness 
so that our faith does not dim and our love does not grow cold. And the garment that is our soul remains clean and sparkling white as snow and not, does not return to the filthy rags of our own self-righteousness. Well, I don't know if I have enough faith. I don't know if I've got enough faith if Jesus was to return or if I was to drop dead tomorrow. What should I do? I don't know. Do we want to increase our faith? Remember Christ Jesus tells us that faith the size of a mustard seed is enough. Small faith is enough. What we really need is increased obedience and humility. That's the tough one. Small faith is sufficient if we have increased obedience and humility. Some of the faithful even think that their perceived lack in life, their defeat in life, their insecurities, their illness, their suffering. Some think that their lack of watchfulness and repentance during the Advent season. Some think their difficulty in not giving in to what society puts forth as the reason for the season is due to their lack of faith. So if I had more faith, then I'd be able to do all these things. Well, maybe it is true that they lack faith, even the size of a mustard seed, but they're wrong in why they lack faith. They lack faith because they treat faith as a concept, not as the way of being. They lack faith for precisely the reasons Christ gave in the scriptures, for lack of obedience and lack of humility, the very acts of faith. But the corrective for these isn't more emphasis, emphasis on faith. They need more and more and more of it, for faith is not an it. but more emphasis on watchfulness and humility. And repentance. Well, what is watchfulness anyway? Well, watchfulness is taught throughout the scriptures and throughout the history of the church by the apostles, all the great saints. What is watchfulness? If Anybody wants more information on this, just shoot me an email and I can give you all kinds of information on this to help you. But in a nutshell, for this first Sunday of Advent, watchfulness is literally the opposite of drunkenness. How are you when you're drunk? Well, you're certainly not sober. Are you alert? When, you're, when you've had too much to drink, are you alert? Some might say that, they get behind the wheel anyway. Are you prayerfully vigilant when you're under the influence? Are you in complete control of your faculties and your mind and your body? Not so much. Watchfulness is the opposite of this. Watchfulness is the act of keeping watch over one's inward thoughts and our feelings, our vain imaginations, the way we think the world ought to be. Watchfulness is that constant guarding of one's soul as our thoughts come in. And watchfulness makes possible the act of praying without ceasing and also brings with the reality of all the virtues, bringing the purity of heart to the stillness that is within. Jesus said, go into your closet, close the door and pray. It means go into your soul, 
Don't look out there for the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is within. In short, this is a pithy little one. Watchfulness is faith put to work. Watchfulness is faith put to work. There's no need to monitor one's level of faith day after day. Am I more holy now than I was at nine this morning? Yesterday was a good day. I was really holy. Boy, I've really missed the mark today. The reality is we're different people every day. We can't maintain the same level. We have to be kind not only to others, but to ourselves as well. Simply engage in watchfulness and the goal of faith is accomplished day by day. Isn't this true with working out? Sometimes you don't feel like it, but you do your best. Faith isn't a mind product. Faith isn't a concept in it. Faith is the life in Christ. The faith that we have available to us is the faith of Christ. One is in faith similar to how one is in love. You live out faith. Faith can only be worked out from the inside. One does not observe faith from the outside and then kind of figure out how faith works and then somehow figure out a way to apply faith. No. As one old saint wrote, and I love his writings, strive to enter the shrine within you and you will see the shrine of heaven. For the one is the same as the other and a single entrance permits you to contemplate both. The ladder leading to that kingdom is hidden within you. That is within your soul. Cleanse yourself from sin and there you will find the steps by which to ascend. To cut off sinful thoughts, we first must recognize such thoughts as our enemy. We must realize that they can separate us from God. For example, when we have a resentful or judgmental thought against our neighbor, we must recognize that entertaining this thought will put us at enmity with God. So we refuse to entertain the thought. We just let the thought go. But if it comes back again, an hour later, or even as so often happens, a few minutes or a few seconds later, we again cut that thought off. Watchfulness and faith, repentance and prayer go hand in hand in preparing to meet Christ at our death, to meet Christ at the celebration of his advent in humility, hand in hand with Christ at his return in glory, the preparation is the same. Therefore, keep awake, wait, watch, prepare, increase your watchfulness in the faith of Christ. And by that, fulfill the call of the Advent season. Do that and you will fulfill the call of our Lord and Savior. To watch, to be ready. For you do not know when the Son of Man will appear.